Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, coming at you on live. Uh, today's focus is going to be on meiosis. This is the short version of meiosis as per by request. Um, now meiosis is a process that results in an egg if you're a female, or a sperm cell if you are a male. When an egg and a sperm combine, we get a, a whole new human form. That's called making a baby. The egg carries the genes from the mom, and the sperm carries the genes from the dad. So the sperm carries the DNA from the dad. You are a combination of genes from your mom and your dad. Your eye color, hair color, all depends on which egg cell and which sperm cell randomly combine. So it is a random process. Now I want to take a second to review this process that we just learned about called mitosis. Uh, mitosis is a type of cellular division that involves replication and division of chromosomes. New cells, or every new cell, has a new complete set of chromosomes, which means that we have two copies of genetic information. So having two is what's normal. Uh, so having two copies of genetic information is called being diploid, and for some reason a scientist assigned uh, 2N, which means diploid. So if we only had one copy of genetic information, that would be haploid, which is, would just be assigned the letter N. Now, um, I want to show you an example of what it means to be diploid. Let's say that this chromosome right here came from your mom, and this chromosome right here came from your dad. You can see that they're a little bit different, but they would do the same thing. Let's say that this uh, chromosome here um, says from your mom says to do homework. This chromosome here from your dad says to not do homework. So ultimately, it's, we're controlling whether or not you do homework, so it's the same trait, or it's the same thing that has happening in your body, but you get one from your mom and one from your dad. And what's interesting here is that if, you, if we multiply that, so as such as here, it still is called diploid because we just simply copied the same genetic information for the same thing. So it's not like we added anything new in there, we just cut, made a copy of it. So all somatic cells, which are otherwise known as body cells, so skin cells, kidney cells, eye cells, hair cells, um, liver cells, heart cells, all those things are what's called 2N. That means diploid. Now sex cells, which are otherwise known as egg and sperm, are the only haploid cells in your entire body. And we assign the letter N for haploid. Sex cells are these things called germ cells which only contain one copy of genetic information. So either it has one from your mom or one from your dad, but not both, like normal. Having one chromosome of each pair or half of that dip, of diploid cells. So each sex cell has half of what a diploid cell or a, or a somatic cell would have. So again, sex cells are what's called haploid. Now I want to talk for a second what, it, what, uh, what we find in a human being. Uh, we find 46 total chromosomes uh, in, a, in a human being. And again, those are, those are in what we call somatic cells. So the number of homologous pairs that are found in a diploid cell would be 23. Because if we, again, we have 46 total, but you have one from your mom and one from your dad. And ultimately, those are controlling the same trait. So those, we have 23 homologous pairs. So the total number that would occur in a haploid cell would be 23, which means that we have one, either one from our mom or either one from our dad. So that means that we only have one copy of genetic information. In a diploid cell, we have two copies, and so we have 46 total chromosomes. And that's a little bit different in a cat, where they have 36 total chromosomes. So 18 would be found in a diploid cell. 18 homologous pairs would be found in a diploid cell, and 18 would be found in a haploid cell. Why is it important to be haploid? Well, take a look what would happen if our cells multiplied in a diploid state. If we have one copy here from our mom, one copy here from our dad, coming together with another copy from our mom, one copy from our dad, we would have four copies. And that's called 4N, and that's too much. If a person has 4N, they have a lot of different problems. Uh, they may not even be able to survive to birth at all. So uh, that's a problem. So here's why we make haploid cells, because we can have one copy from either our mom from our, or our dad, and then another copy from either our mom or our dad come together, 
and we get two copies, which is what's normal. And that would be uh, what's called diploid, and that would be a normal, healthy cell. Reproductive process is um, a process which involves a haploid cell, which is either a, a, sex, is a sex cell, either from the mom or the dad, uh, and those are called gametes, where they fuse together and produce a diploid fertilized egg, and that's called a zygote. So to review, we have the egg that comes from our moms, and the sperm, which comes from our dads, and that, when that comes together, we get a 2N, or a diploid organism, and that coming together, when they do come together, we get this thing called a zygote, and eventually it will form a fetus and then a, a whole new human being. So meiosis, to, to overview what meiosis is, it is a process of cellular division that reduces the number of chromosomes in half. It occurs in sex cells, otherwise known as germ cells, and an example of a germ cell would be an egg or a sperm. Meiosis occurs in two parts. We have meiosis 1 and we have meiosis 2. So meiosis 1 here is simply where we, uh, where we multiply DNA, just like we do in mitosis, but we are going to get those go off in either direction, and eventually we are going to get four new cells in a process called meiosis 2. So prophase 1, chromosomes are in the form of 2N, so they are diploid. Nuclear division and nucleolus disappear just like they do in, in, in mitosis. But what's interesting is that we get this thing called um, a synapsis, where we have homologous chromosomes. Uh, so this one here that I'm circling would be from your mom, and this one here would be from your dad. They do what's this thing's called crossing over. So they form a synapsis where they combine together and they cross over. And they actually exchange a little bit of DNA. So in, in orange here, let's say that this came from your mom, and then in brown, or in blue here, let's say this came from your dad. When they pair up, they actually exchange a little bit of genetic information. And that's, that allows for more combinations of different human beings. Metaphase 1, homologous chromosomes line up at the equator. So here's, let's say that here was dad and here's mom. They line up at the equator, just like they do in mitosis. And then they go their separate ways. In anaphase one and telophase one, they we we you know we separate the chromosomes just like we do in mitosis. And now what's interesting is here at, at this point chromosomes are or, or cells are what's called haploid. And so after telophase one finishes, cell, cells are when what's it's what's called haploid. Again, let's remember I said in, in black we have what what uh, comes from dad, and in right we have what comes from mom. So even though we have two copies of dad, uh, dad contributed the same genetic information so even having another copy uh, doesn't really matter. Um, it's not going to actually change the outcome of what you look like because it's just multiple copies of the same thing. So mom goes one way and dad goes the other. Now what's interesting is between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 we have no interface so bam we jump right to 2. In prophase 2, cells begin as being what's called haploid, so we only have one copy of genetic information. So in, in black here, remember I said this was dad, all of that chromosome is dad. He has, a, he, there, it looks like there's two there, but there actually is a, the original copy, and then there is a copy of that copy. So cells get ready to divide again, and in my, toast, my metaphase 2, chromosomes line up at the equator, and metaphase 2 looks just like it does in mitosis, except right here we have uh, all of these chromosomes separating, which originated from dad, and all of these chromosomes here, which originated from mom. In anaphase 2, sister chromatids move to opposite poles, just like they do in mitosis. And in telophase 2, the cell pinches off, and nuclear membrane, nuclear membrane reappears. So just like in mitosis, we get this separating and we get two new cells begin to form although if you take a look all of this cell here contains genetic information from dad and all of this cell right here contains genetic information from mom so uh, as a result we get four haploid cells that are produced we if you are a female we get one egg and three polar bodies so actually if you are a female there's only going to actually be one that is actually going to produce an egg, and three of these are going to die off, 
and this egg is actually going to have all of the uh, stuff that all of these other three would have had. So this one egg is, is, is think of it as being really important, which is kind of why it takes a month to make one of those. Uh, if you're a male, we're going to get four new uh, sperm cells, four little sperm cells. In females, egg formation is controlled by hormones, and in males, sperm formation is not controlled by hormones, so it just happens automatically. It's just happening all the time, from the, from the day that you go through puberty all the way till you die. Uh, here is an overview of meiosis. This is a graph or a diagram of meiosis. I'm going to draw a line right here, because everything on this side of the, of the line is meiosis 1, and everything on this side of the line is meiosis 2. So you can take a look, uh, if you look in detail here, you can see that uh, we have, this is where we have homologous chromosomes separating. Again, one from mom goes the one way, and one from dad goes the other way. So when we begin over here, we are beginning with uh, everything that was from mom and everything that was from dad over here. So we have, it looks like we have two copies, but we have one copy from mom, and the another copy from mom so we have two copies of mom so we it's not like we have a full organism there we have two copies of mom and in the end remember we are going to produce one two three four of these things called gametes that's an important word in in biology anyway this was the short version of meiosis and this is mr herbst i'm signing off folks you all have a nice day